Mini oil change schedules can vary depending on many circumstances, but my R50 Mini displays 15,500 miles as its servicing schedule. My personal preference would be to halve that. Oil viscosity again depends on many factors. The genuine Mini Long Life 04 oil is SA0W30, but I will be using 5W30 to C3 spec oil. Now before we do anything, we need to warm that old engine oil up to help it drain out better. Normally in my oil change videos I do a bit of a drive around, but since things are a little sensitive in the year 2021, I shall stick to warming the engine at home. So while I do that, here's a bit of info on minis from my wife. The original Mini was first produced in 1959 with an engine size of 848cc. This gave the new Mini a top speed of 75 miles per hour. Back then this new economy car sold for around £500. It was in production for an impressive 41 years and worldwide production was nearly 5.5 million cars, with production ending in the year 2000. The later BMW made Minis, as seen here, started production in late 2000 and used a 1.6 litre Tri-Tech engine. I believe this has a top speed of around 112 miles per hour. Anyway, the engine is now warm. Other than a trolley jack and some axle stands, you'll need the following tools to do this oil and filter change on the Mini. A 13mm socket for the sump plug, a 36mm socket for the oil filter housing, a torque wrench to measure 25 newton meters, suitable oil filter element and seal, 4.5 litres of 5W30 oil to C3 spec, and an oil catch container and some gloves. So I'm going to be using this Techno Lou 5W30, which is to the C3 spec as specified by BMW. We'll also need the oil filter, which is like the element type, which comes with a rubber seal. This one is a Quinton Hazel QFL0073. And you should get a new rubber seal with that as well. And there's the number on the side of the box. We'll also need for the sump plug a 13 millimeter socket. I was hoping I could take this off and the camera would see it, but no such luck. Now for the oil filter housing, it's quite a large 36 millimeter socket. You want to low profile one of those if you can. And a torque wrench for 25 newton meters. Also a good idea to have disposable gloves because oil is not good for your hands and possibly some oil absorbent mats. And of course, the very important oil catch pan. This one's 17 litres. When I bought my first Mini, I couldn't figure out how to open the bonnet. So I would just add that bit first, for those that may not know. So the bonnet catch is in the driver's footwell. We just pull that, that pops the bonnet. And then on the right hand side of the bonnet, there's a little yellow lever. We push that up and the bonnet goes up hydraulically. With the bonnet now open, now might be a good time to take a look at some of the parts that we may come across. So here we can see the rough location of the oil filter element, the oil filler cap and the oil level dipstick. And here's a view from a different angle. And this will be the view once we jack the car up. And if we turn the camera around, we can now clearly see the oil drain plug and the engine sump. So I've had to take a photo through the right hand wheel arch, just so you can actually see the oil filter itself. And there it is, a close up view, and you can see the crankshaft pulley next to it. And here's a couple of photos showing the other major parts that you'll find under the bonnet of your Mini. I'm just gonna check the level of the oil as this can help me gauge the quantity of oil presently in the engine. So the reason I sometimes do this on a new car is that if the oil is on maximum and then I drain the oil out, I can measure it and just confirm how much I'm putting in so I don't overfill it. Now if I look at this here, I can see that my engine takes about four and a half litres. It's about half a litre down. 
so I should expect to see 4 litres of dirty oil come out. Now we can jack the Mini up and make safe. So I've highlighted the rubber jacking points on the seal in red as you can see and that's where I'm going to put my trolley jack. And I've protected it also with a hockey puck. Now I'm going to jack it up using two jacks on each side. There is a subframe which does look quite strong but according to what I've read it says not to jack up on the subframe. So with that in mind I will just do the laborious way of using two jacks on each seal and then I'll make safe with a couple of axle stands just popped underneath there. I'll probably leave the jacks in position as well just for added security. Now to loosen the oil filler cap to allow air in. This will help with proper drainage. So by allowing air in it prevents any vacuum possibly forming as we try to drain the oil. So that will let the air in and now I'm just going to put underneath there an oil absorbent sheet to keep any oil off the driveway so we're now ready to get on. So we can now drain the dirty old oil using a 13mm socket. So with our 13mm socket in hand we've got our drain pan Normally I'd use a little breaker bar on that, it's quite easy to undo on a mini. And then as we undo it, I always push the sump plug in until I get to the last thread so that I can put it away in one quick go, which normally works. There we go. This is why sometimes it's handy to have one of those oil absorbent cloths on the floor, just in case it spills everywhere. So it is quite important now that we leave this for quite a while. We want every bit of oil out of there and any of the dirty contaminants along with it. So once we're happy that all the oil is actually out and there's nothing left to come out, that is still dripping a little bit. Now, sometimes it's worth changing these sump plugs to a new one because there is a seal on it. And then we can snug it back up with our 13 millimeter socket and then take that dirty oil and put it somewhere safe. Importantly we must tighten to 25 newton meters. So the torque wrench is now set to 25 newton meters so we can pop back under the car and now correctly tighten the sump plug till we hear the click. I'll do it again just in case you didn't hear it. So, on to the oil filter now. Now for the oil filter element and we need a 36mm socket for this. So this bit can be somewhat messy, so you definitely want to put a tray underneath when you're doing this. So with our 36mm socket in hand, we need to just reach down to the back of the engine and undo the filter housing and it is quite tight in there which is why a low profile 36 millimeter socket would be better suited. Now before you fully release it you may want a jug ready to put this filter into because it's gonna dribble a fair bit. So we're dribbling underneath the car and you definitely want a container to pop that into as quick as possible. So if we take a look under the car, quite a bit of oil did splash out on that tray. With the filter cover now off, we can actually replace the filter element and the o-ring seal. So before we play around with the dirty oil filter, let's have a look at a clean one. So note this end and then note the three rings on the other end. And here's how it should look with the new seal in position and the new filter media note the visible rings on the end. So make sure you've got your disposable gloves on for this part because this is quite mucky. So let's have a look at this new filter. We've got an idea what it looks like from the previous photos. There's the three rings on one end and one ring on the other. 
and you can see the three rings on the old filter that's protruding. So I'll give that a little wipe over and pull it out and pop that to one side. That definitely needs to go in the bin. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a wipe out and then we will need to use some sort of pick just to remove the old o-ring like so and make sure you don't get it mixed up with the new one because it won't be too good to put the old one back on give it another little wipe so there's our new seal I'll pop a bit of oil on that just to help it seal and slide on nicely and make sure you pop it into the correct groove And then we can take our new filter. I'm also going to pop a little bit of oil on these felt pads at the end. Again, just to help it slot on. Like so. I can go back on the car now. The new filter is now ready to go back on the car. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of extra oil to that new rubber seal. So I want to make sure that definitely slides in and doesn't get puckered on the way in. I'll also pop a bit more oil on the felt top as well, just to help with that going on. So we just need to slot the cover on, but make sure we don't cross thread it. So like there, I'm not sure, it feels like it could be cross thread. So I'll just check it again until I'm happy. Now this is very awkward to try and get a socket in here. Um, a spanner is probably going to be easier. But a 36mm, that's quite large. So it probably needs to be a low profile socket. Something I need to add to the shopping list. Um, and then we need to tighten that to 25 newton meters. Now this is where I had the issue with that socket being too big. It was actually coming into contact with the body of the car. So I couldn't get it quite on there. I get the click. So it's presumably torqued correctly. But I would have liked that to have sat on fully and not just at an angle. So we can now remove the oil tray and lower the car. So remove those axle stands and then bit by bit we lower the mini down all right we can now start to put some clean oil in her time to measure some oil out so i'm just going to mark that all the oil i need is four and a half liters and that means there should be half a liter left in the container when i filled it correctly so hopefully, I should see about four litres come out. That's what I predicted. And allowing for some in the oil filter and that. I'd say that was about four litres. We can now refill the Mini with some good, clean, fully synthetic oil. Okay, so time to get that four and a half litres of C3 oil into the engine. Now the C3 is an oil that is low in saps, or in English, is an oil with a low sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfur content, which is engineered to increase the life of the three-way catalytic converter on modern cars. It also has to meet other criteria, like the shear rate viscosity of the oil and be temperature appropriate. So that seems to be our four and a half litres in there now. So we should be able to start the engine, fill the oil filter, and then we can check our oil level again for the final time. Now run the engine to fill the new oil filter and confirm the oil pressure light goes out. So I'll point to the oil pressure light, which is that one there, oil can, and it'll probably stay on for a bit. So it's still on now, and it's gone off. That means the oil filter housing is now full of oil and the oil pressure is okay. 
and now we can check the oil level for the final time. So if we now pull the dipstick out, give it a wipe clean. It's always important you wipe it clean first. Pop it back in and then we should have an accurate reading. So if we look at that, if I zoom in on a photo, it's about another quarter of a litre to the maximum mark. So I can just pop that little bit of oil back in there. That should be now at the maximum mark. Give it a quick check over that I've not left any tools sat on top of the engine or anything. And close the bonnet. So the final job is to reset the service reminder on the Mini and record the mileage for our service history. So press the button, keep it pressed and turn ignition to position 1. Keep pressed till 51A shows. There it is. Now let go and press it again till RST appears which means reset. There it is, RST, then let go and press again to reset. So it's now showing 15,500 miles for the next service. And turn it back on again. And my mileage is 122,914. When I do an oil change on a car that's new to me, I always like to open that old oil filter up just to see if there's any signs of metal. Doing this is probably not really strictly necessary and if it was one of the metal oil filter canisters cutting those open can be extremely dangerous. Um, but the car is new to me, it has got 122,000 miles on it so I would just like to see how the maintenance has been. Now by cutting it open I might possibly see any flecks of metal that the filter has trapped over time. So it can give me an indication as to whether I may have any imminent issues in the near future. So that's the two ends cut off. That was quite easy with tin snips. And then we've got a little tube inside. Like that. And we've now got the filter media on its own. So what we can do is just carefully look at all the pleats and see if we can see any bronze coloured metal, almost like gold. Now this is looking actually pretty clean and I can't see any flecks of metal at all. So that's a good sign. So hopefully this engine has been looked after and there's no imminent problems coming. I will conclude the video with some photographs that were used in the making of this video. So here's a photo showing most of the major components and this is mostly the electrical items under the bonnet. This is mostly oil service related Again, we can see the filler cap there and the dipstick. And underneath the car, we can just see the oil drain plug. And again, this is the drain plug showing the sump as well. And there's the oil filter just peeping through the wheel arch. And another shot of that with the steering rack also in the photo. And there's a close up of that oil filter. And here's the new oil filter showing the three rings and then the other end showing the single ring. And then that's the new seal in place. And this is the oil we used with its specifications. I thought I would just add a bit of information regarding engine oils as I found it all to be a bit confusing with those numbers and W's. Oil has many jobs to do. It doesn't just lubricate, it takes heat away from the hot spots and then cools in the sump before doing the rounds again. It also helps add a seal around the pistons, keeping some pressure in the cylinders. The moving parts in an engine also have slight gaps and the oil effectively creates a wedge, preventing metal against metal contact and thus wear. So, to the numbers on our oil container, which were SAE 5W30. 
and the SAE stands for the Society of Automotive Engineers that came up with the rating system. The 5W is the viscosity of the oil in winter, as oil becomes thick when cold and makes starting the engine difficult with all that drag of thick oil. The original A-series Mini was 20W, but this was fine as the tolerance inside the older engine were bigger. The 30 represents the viscosity of the oil at normal rated temperature. Again, this figure was higher for the original Mini, which had a viscosity of 50. In the old days, the oil might be changed from a winter grade to a summer grade, but this is no longer done as we have multi-grade oils covering both circumstances. Conventional minerals have been pushed aside in favour of fully synthetic oils, which are still based on mineral oils, but have been chemically engineered to improve their performance. Thank you for watching and hope this video helped you in the repair of your Mini Cooper. This video was filmed and edited by Mark Savage in January 2021.